It's survival conditions here in Taranto, Sail Grand Prix. The USA team, led by Jimmy Spittle, approaches gate three, chasing the Spanish team. We're in a really good battle in the mid-fleet pack. Went behind the Spanish and then we're getting ready for a right turn, bear away downwind. Hands was to Leward because of the tight situation. He was didn't have time to cross. As we went for the bear away, we kind of hit a funny wave. But it was like, okay, no problem. Here we go. Let's go again. As we started going, I noticed that the foil was a big setting, and that's when I said to Hans, "Hey, easy here." At the same time, I looked to Leward, and then he just wasn't there. Hands. Yeah, race committee, race committee, race committee. Uh, man overboard, we've lost a crew member. Oh, oh no. Man overboard, man overboard. Hey, USA have one. I heard Jimmy come over the radio and said, man overboard, we got someone in the water, which is right where we were going through the water at 50 knots with our hydrofoils. It was really scary to me, because I, I remember thinking, are you sure there was no one there? Like, because all it takes is to clip someone at those speeds. I listened to the radio after I just saw Jimmy saying man overboard. Man overboard, we've lost the crew. Yeah. I saw the screen, I saw our boat stopping. Oh, they cut, they cut the camera. I could only think of his wife, you know, who was watching and, and how she must have been feeling, you know. And so as soon as I heard what was happening, I just went to HQ. So I've got his wife, she's here in Toronto. Um, so I think I'll say I'm here with yeah. you and waiting for one finish. And you know, in those moments, it's, it's, it's your heart, your heart just starts pumping, you know. It's just a not knowing, you know, while, while you don't know what's happening, that's, um, that's the worst part. I have, I have Hans delivered, I have Hans delivered. They look like they've found Hans here. Hey, race committee, race committee, need the medic boat immediately. Jimmy, he's not a guy who's prone to overreaction, so if he is calling for a medic boat, then you know that something serious has happened. And of course you fear the worst because we've experienced the very worst. And flight control was knocked out. He was unconscious and that's where it was very concerning. Monitor out safety alpha. Both safety assets are responding to USA. Can you see where safety one is currently? Mel, just an update. We have safety one and safety two helping the team USA. Hey, hook the chase boat. Hey, wait till the bow goes on. Can we get a view from the stern camera? Go, 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 go. shortly after that he had regained consciousness. So that was the first relief. Breathing? Yeah, yeah. Breathing, he's stable. I was fortunate enough to spend a bit of time with him in hospital. And uh, by that stage, he was starting to get his sense of humor back. He just wanted to talk about the racing. I think for the team, you always want to go out and win, but probably never have we had that intense kind of energy and purpose in the team to get out there and, and try and get a couple of good results for hands.
there's like a hundred different stipulations on when and where you can park. But we're in between spots here at the moment, so and you're about six feet from the curb. This is up. Look at it. If you need any help, he's an expert. <laughs> You have to develop a, a winning culture, which I think is from the outside looking in is kind of what the U.S. team has struggled with. Yeah. You know, it's no secret we, we have a deal in principle to acquire the U.S. Sale GP team. And we collectively believe we, we just acquired the, you know, the New York Yankees of, of sailboat racing globally. How is that? How are you doing? Well, we're here in L.A. Yeah. We've yeah. been in a lot of active discussions to sell the U.S. team. So when Russell and I caught up, he said, it's Ryan McKillen from Uber. I was kind of blown away. I mean, here we have someone that has built one of the most iconic tech companies. But the bonus, we've got a guy here that's an avid, passionate sailor that really enjoys racing. So, I mean, it really ticked all the boxes. Andy there. Mike. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm here. You, you, you pick up Ryan? Yeah, they, they picked me up. They came to the wrong terminal, so I, you know, I had to walk. But they, if you call that picking me up, they did. The one catch to the offer was Ryan wanted Taylor Canfield to drive the boat and Mike Buckley to be the CEO. Hey, here to see Larry Ellison. Larry Ellison, uh, your name? Uh, Buckley. Ryan McKillen. Uh, you can tell Andrew Thompson we're here. Thank you. Mike is definitely the engine behind the trio here. He's one of the grittiest guys I've ever, ever met in my life. When Mike has his eyes set on something, he doesn't take oh, no yeah. for an answer. Good morning. The first one. Yeah, doing good. We talked last night at dinner and putting an F50 in like in Times Square, something loud like that. Like If you just wants to pay the bill for getting it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you helicopter it in, you make a scene, you know, Nine million people need to know that Sail GP is happening in New York City. Um, I think we have a chance to take sailing and move it from a gentleman's sport to an extreme sport, really broaden the appeal. We have like, you know, three kind of pillars that we talk about. Um, three races. Race to commercial viability, yeah. sponsors. Race to change the sport. Yeah. And the race that's around these buoys. Um, I'm not sure the third is the most important thing. The only thing I, I, I wouldn't agree with is I'm not sure how many sports teams in the world do well commercially when they're finishing at the back of the fleet. Fair enough. Yeah. You can't help but be impressed with Ryan, and I think he is a visionary. He is coming in with fresh eyes, which is what sailing needs. Hey, Jimmy. Good, mate. Effectively, Russell, myself, and Larry had to collectively agree the way forwards for a sale of the US team. But it became pretty apparent that not only is this transaction great for the US team and for US sailing, it's actually produced and given me the controlling interest in entering an Italian team on the start line for season five. And look, I can tell you from first-hand experience from competing in Italy and competing for Italy, they have the most passionate fans, some of the most iconic venues, and the best athletes currently, I believe, in the world coming through the ranks. So, I mean, it's, it's difficult for me to put into words, but it's a very, very exciting time. So the new group of Ryan McKillen, Mike Barkley and Taylor Canfield are here in Cadiz, but I guess one of the ironic twists to it is that Taylor, who will be replacing me as driver, he's actually racing with us this weekend. Sorry? Jimmy's last event with the US. Potentially. Ah, uh, yeah. Confirmed. Yes. <laughs> Tell him I said that. <laughs> Tell him? Yeah. Taylor will be stepping in for Hans Haken, who is still recovering from the injury in Toronto, so he'll be fulfilling the flight controller role. Can we do something where he lays down out here? Yeah. And you shoot him laying like, and we can Photoshop him into the beach. That's right. You know what I mean? On the beach, yeah. Yeah, yeah like a little Sports that. Illustrated. Absolutely. Maybe we do a body edition. Yeah. <laughs> Watching the uh, 
home crowd cheer for your team. It was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got it all on video of like the crowd going nuts. You jumping, uh, jumping on board for the next event already? Or? Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Dubai. Yep. Is it the local or the national paper? It's the national paper, the newspaper. Ah. A mí me han dicho, tú mira seria. Yo, mira. Intimido. The Spanish team, they get this moment to shine. They've got an event here in Cadiz, their home country event. They have this screening of Sail GP racing on the edge. Hay mucha gente aquí. We were in that black van and there was a huge amount of people. And then we exited the van and people were driving crazy. They were saying, wow, these are the same GP guys. Vamos! If you're Diego and Florian and you're young and attractive, and now you're like actor level superstar in Spain. Am I? I was getting that, that chicken skin on, on my skin, no? I was getting the, the, I don't know how you call it in English, uh, piel de gallina, and, and goosebumps. Yeah, Hans is recovering well. We're on the back foot, we know that. But Taylor is jumping in and we'll, we'll be going out and doing everything we can. I think Taylor really knew what he was getting into because he has raced on the F50 in the past. How'd you go, Taylor, on the boat to practice? I don't know. It's not really up for me to decide, is it? <laughs> How'd he go? <laughs> was he? You can be honest. Give him some tough love, He dude. can take it. I told him exactly what he needed to do at the time. And he did it. It's good. Yeah. They haven't come from Olympic backgrounds. They haven't sailed in America's Cup finals. They're talented sailors. They've won a lot of races around the world, but this is a, another level. So I said, if I was you, I wouldn't change too much. Just put Taylor in for me and keep the team locked. So Michael would? Yeah. It's weird, right? Jimmy steps out one door and Taylor steps in. But what about the rest of the guys and girls on the boat? I don't think they even really know yet. I think a few of them know that they're out. A few of them are just fully in the dark. Our intention is to talk with everyone. Um, I know you guys have been anxiously waiting and trying to figure out what the plan is moving forward, but um, yeah, bear, bear with us. I, I promise there is a, a plan and it uh, pretty much involves everyone here. So let's go. Yeah, and a few words, I guess. <laughs> Until we get on the water. Yeah. <laughs> then there'll be an absolute roasting. <laughs> and more news from this practice session. Tom Slingsby from Team Australia is becoming a father in no time and is set to miss the next Grand Prix at Dubai. Yeah, Australia Star GP team has turned into a dad and mum club. Uh, little rugrats running around everywhere. It is going to be the first time I've ever missed a day of Sao GP. Honestly, we don't actually know who will be steering uh, the Roo in Dubai. Um, look, it's between three people. Whether Jason Waterhouse steps up and steers, uh, we've got Nathan Outridge sitting in the sidelines, and then, who knows, maybe Jimmy Spithill. I think how lucky is Tom? He's got three good options. huge lead and let the celebration begin as they open things up on their home event with a huge victory. Viva la España, Spain takes the win. And also, there you go, USA, Jimmy Spittle, and they'll be happy with the USA there. Good comeback, they're starting to find form. The product is, I mean, you probably never dreamed that there'd be this many people watching a sailing race, right? And that's what I'm psyched about, to kind of see how we can really collaborate on that. 
Race two and USA is in third, being chased by Canada. But what's Phil Robertson doing? He's abandoning the fight. He changes direction to block Spain. This is going to cost him time. Oh, massive from Phil Robertson. Look at this here. Spain is not allowed in there. Oh, no, no, no. Pit, pit, off, pit. Don't crash, Phil. Don't crash. No. Spain relative Canada. Oh. Not entitled to Mark Room. Wow, was that payback for Sandra Pay? There's no love lost between those two teams. It's really hard to know how Phil feels about the Spanish team. No, uh, we've had some situations lately, and I don't know if he's getting it personal or not. Hey guys, sounding like a turkey. <laughs> Phil, he wants to see penalty points there as well. Like, he's fuming that the umpires didn't actually penalise the Spanish more. They cop one penalty for it, which I think is a little bit ridiculous. I love your stirring up the controversy. All right. Um... Just being honest. <laughs> yeah, I'm not stirring anything. Like, I'm just calling it how it is. Um, so, yes, there's an incident at the Windward Gate between uh, Canada and Spain. Obviously, it was a pretty reckless maneuver, and they obviously scratched the bell. Sorry, Phil, but you was not able to see if we touched the mark or not. So I think at this point you are in a position with a lack of interest. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Good one. It's such a pity, guys. I mean, they put. Yeah, Touch the mark apparently in just an aesthetic scratch, so just the paint of the boat, and we get four points of penalty for the event and two points of the season. Fourth and fifth. Whoever wins the battle between those two boats will be moving on to the event final. Okay. Oh, and the Kiwis jive right in front of the British. That could be a mistake by New Zealand here. They are, they've trapped themselves. Big error by the Kiwis. Massive error. Advantage USA. Thank you so bad. Oh, Ah, that's bullshit. <laughs> lemon. Hey, you're not even in our race. Oi, I heard that. Bye. It was a full meltdown on the Kiwi team. The Americans took the advantage. So how do you like this? Two events in a row, and the Americans just barely slide into the event final. Not even in our race, mate. Why do you think you're so special? Put it in our race. Just because you won two, no, so what? They've mm -hmm. easily gone above us. Oh. So arrogant. It's so friggin' arrogant. Yeah. Words get said on the water and, you know, we weren't in a battle with the British in this particular event and they took advantage of the opportunity and, um, yeah, that was that. Was that. Five minutes before the start of the final here in Cadiz, the wind has dropped considerably. We're going to see a full crew configuration on the boats, and this means Jimmy Spitter will handle both the helm and flight controlling. I know it's been somewhat of a little bit of a delayed farewell, but this one's it. I'm out, and so I guess the only thing I really want to... Um, to finish up with is that for today, no matter what happens, I'm going to come in with a smile on my face. Now, clearly, if we win the race, my smile will be a lot bigger. So just go out and enjoy the day because, man, I can tell you, there are so many people out there that would just kill to be in this position. See him in the distance? They're going to win. I think they're going to win. Settle in, we're a minute away from the event final here at the Spain Sail Grand Prix. It's Australia, the USA, and Denmark to do battle on the Atlantic. Bouncy, mate, bouncy, bouncy, back, 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 back. Oh, USA, Jimmy Spittle, mistake outside the boundary. He's gonna have to start behind the fleet. Hey, racing, we have got penalty, wind up. Watch for the line to turn, right? Clear start, big mistake by USA, and what will Denmark, they're gonna be in first position at Mark 1. Oh, it's not over yet. <laughs> and 
and the Dane magic continues in the event final. Look at that start, the biggest they've seen all weekend long. It's a little bit crazy. Almost leading out, I agree. And here comes America, deeply last, and they see the two guys in front of them getting light and coming off the foils in their jibe, and they jibe early. Australia stay following. Denmark is slow, though. They're off the foils. USA first to turn. Could stay foiling on board the US boat. Can they keep it up in the air? Jimmy oh. spits along the handles there. He's done a fantastic job of staying foiling. Expect a lead change. Right, I'm more pressure Jimmy had to try something. And luckily for him, it paid off. He got this great puff and managed to stay on the foils, and that was the final after that 30 seconds of action. Jimmy Spittle, great, great decision-making. Saw Denmark get slow, saw them get into less wind, and thought, I'm not going there. The Americans without the services of Hans Hanken, who was injured, and right now they are going to give him a nice present to help with that recovery, because the Americans have a monster lead now. Ooh. 350 meters ahead. Oh. Oh. Pretty happy on board there. They are the new fearsome force of the Atlantic Ocean. It's Jimmy Spithill and the USA Sail GP team. They come to Spain and they claim the victory. This is Jimmy Spithill, a textbook victory. The legend of Mr. Jimmy Spithill keeps growing. And now over to the new owners of the USA team, Mike Buckley, Taylor Canfield. So let's see how you carry on with this winning culture. We'll find out in Dubai. It's so awkward for Jimmy, isn't it? It's like, Hans got hurt. He invited Taylor on board. Then got into sail without him for a final race where they have this like miracle win. And he can sort of go out in this like fireworks of a bang. Like you actually could not script this storyline if you were to script it. The team was in last place when I took over. And look at where we are now. We just won in Cadiz, Spain, and in the overall standings, we're on the podium, we're in third place. So if we were to race the grand final tomorrow, the US team would be in the final. You talk about a, purchasing a turnkey team with a winning culture. He's leaving the team in a great situation, and he's almost leaving the next team with the challenge well, let's see, guys, see if you can match what I'm doing. I think it's great. We've built such a great group of people on and off the water that as a team member, to me, it's all about your teammates. You know, for me, the, 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 the cardinal sin is to let a teammate down. You know, that, that, that I lose sleep over. So if I was a new owner, I'd be, I'd be keeping them. I mean, it's just that to me, it's a no-brainer because you've got some of the best in the world here in this US team. We really suffered a tough moment in the last event when we lost Hans Hanken, our flight controller. So this this win really is we want to dedicate to Hans because he's put in so much work. We're going to clap in there. So obviously we run Taylor driving. I think this is the tricky decision on when Victor's going to be ready. Uh, so to hear rumours that some of the best athletes in the world and arguably I believe you know best coach in the world Cooper Dressler Paul Campbell James Hans Hanken Philippe Presti are leaving the US team man I, I hope they're just that that they're, they're rumors because I'll tell you what that would be a pretty tough first week for Mike as CEO they want to crew the boat solely with US sailors I do think however they are probably underestimating what it will take to get to the top of Sail GP. We say goodbye to Cadiz. Next Grand Prix will be in Dubai. Mr. Tom Slingsby won't be driving the Australian boat due to a paternity leave. And Todd, we've heard lots of rumors all weekend he'll get to be the lucky substitute. Oh, that's funny and so annoying. <laughs> Why is he annoying? Oh, it's just too easy for him. Like, you get kicked off one team, and then miraculously, Tommy has the only baby of his whole life, and you get to go drive the better team. Of course, it'll be Jimmy Spittle. I think deep down inside, Tom is a little bit worried about it because he hasn't won this season. He's thinking, what if Jimmy steps into my boat with my team and wins? You know, that's, that's going to be almost unbearable. Hey, so here's, here's what you can tell the boys, okay? Here's what I've agreed for Dubai. Yeah. 
I'll do it. You want to pay rise now? It's going to be. I'm not going. <laughs> it's not going to be cheap. Yeah. But here's the kicker. You have to agree that your son is now being named Jimmy. Okay. Okay. I think that's fair enough. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. You know, I think it's fair. You have to name your son Jimmy. Okay. You can call the shots right now. I'll be now. the godfather. I understand you finally come into Is some favour. <laughs>